Hello and good morning friends. Today I want to talk to you about a question I received yesterday that I think was interesting and I think is worth uh, having a conversation about. That question is, if you were moving into a home, would you prefer a well that has a high reserve with a low yield or would you prefer to have a high yield with a low reserve? So this is a complicated question, but I think it's worth having a conversation about it. So let's get into it. So first thing before we really kind of get into it, we need to figure out what does it mean for reserve when it comes to a well, right? So reserve is how much water is just stagnantly there. Now it's not technically stagnant because the water is always moving, but it's how much water is just readily available in your well at any given point in time, right? When the well is drilled, basically the best way to think about it is you got a big cup in the ground, that's the aquifer, and you have a giant straw in that cup, that's the well. The straw is what's gonna be getting the water out of the ground by using a pump. In that straw, basically that cup of water is gonna be full until you start to pull water out of it, at which point the water will start to come back in, that's the yield. Reserve is usually calculated 1.5 and some change gallons per linear foot of six inch casing, or one gallon per linear foot for four inch casing. Now in my area, standard practice is six inch casings. Sometimes you'll see fours, but those are usually only on the Eastern shore. So with reserve, it's basically gonna be the depth of the well. Most modern construction of wells is gonna require two things, at least in our state. First thing is in two hours, that well must produce 500 gallons of water, no stoppage, right? After six hours, that well must produce 1.0 gallons per minute. Otherwise, the state will not allow you to use that as your, your well for your property. Wells are drill drilled all throughout the state. And with this requirement, basically the state's trying to make sure that whenever you drill a well for a homeowner, that you're giving them something that can produce water and they shouldn't necessarily have to worry about any loss of water or that well going dry anytime soon. So now that's the reserve. We need to talk a little bit about what is a yield. A yield is how much water is actively coming into that well after you exhaust the reserve. I know, complicated, but we're getting there together. So in order to determine a yield, the first thing you have to do, at least in our state, is you have to start discharging water out of that well at 8.0 or higher gallons per minute. You run it for an extended period of time, usually three hours to six hours. The purpose of running it for three to six hours is to fully exhaust all of the reserve. So remember, if in two hours you must produce 500 gallons of water, that means you're gonna have to run it at least two hours before you can even get close to exhausting the reserve. If the well is low enough yield, it is very possible that you could do that in an hour, hour and a half. But modern wells, again, two hours. So with the yield, you wanna run it for three hours to six, six being the most accurate, but also being the most stressful on your pump. The only county in our state that requires that for existing wells is Baltimore County. All new construction wells are required to do the three to six hour runtime. So once you exhaust the reserve, you're able to calculate how much water is coming into the well. Now in the Piedmont range, basically you have all this fractured rock and that's how the water is working its way through. When you're drilling a well, you're just trying to hit as many of those fractures as you can. You don't really exactly know where the water is until you're done. So what they try to do is they try to go as deep as they can in a known area to get as lucky as they can. Now, once you know your yield, you can do a lot of stuff with that information. And that brings us back to our original question. Remember, the original question was, would I prefer a high yield with a low reserve or a high reserve with a low yield? My opinion on this matter is I would 100 out of 100 times prefer having a higher yield well with a lower reserve. And the reason why is you can do anything with a lot of water. So if, for example, my well is producing 10 gallons per minute, but I've only got 50 gallons of reserve, that's okay because by the time I exhaust the 50 gallons, the well's already full after five minutes, right? So you don't necessarily have to worry about running out of water. With a high reserve, low yield, if you do an extended period of activity, such as pressure wash the house, wash the cars, do laundry, shower, you could potentially run out of water right? And that kind of sucks. There's not much you can really do about it. If you have a high reserve, low yield, pressure issues will happen, water loss will happen, and nobody wants that. So there is a catch, 
to this though. By having a deeper well, the odds of any seasonal fluctuation or developmental fluctuation, and by that I mean like if somebody knocked down the forest behind your house and put in 30 different houses, if their wells are newer than yours, they will suck it dry, right? So if you have a deeper well, the odds of something like that happening and dramatically influencing your well's capability is pretty low but not for a shallow well, right? So if you have a low reserve, that means your well is basically pretty shallow. If you have a shallow well high yield, and this happens a lot in our area, especially with the older homes from like the 1960s, 1970s, if you have a shallow well and there's major development around you, because again, modern standards are a lot more aggressive, you run into the issue of potentially not having any water anymore. And then now you have to drill a new well, which is not cheap. So I get the concern of between the two. My opinion, I would still rather the high yield, low reserve, and take that gamble because development, usually you can see that coming from quite a long distance away. So for example, if I have a house that I'm living in uh, and I don't see any development around me, well, before the, the builder starts to construct the new homes, they have to get approval from the county, which means usually zoning changes, large infrastructure, forest removal, pavement, utilities, all that good stuff, that takes time. So you'll be able to see it coming from quite a long distance in the future, or in the past, basically going towards the future. So that gives you time to budget for eventual well replacement. If you have a large volume of water, you can do whatever you want with it. The main concern that a lot of people have with a shallow well is potential contaminants getting into that well because there's not as many filtering material above the water source that you're collecting. So if you have an unconfined aquifer, you do run a higher risk of other contaminants in your water. Like for the example, on the Eastern Shore, they have a lot of issues with arsenic and cadmium. Well, if you have a deeper well, you don't necessarily have to worry about that as much. There is still potential for it, but it's not as common. My opinion though is you can treat all that. I would rather have a high volume of water and just treat all of those issues out of the water versus having to be water conscious and potentially running out of water while washing the car, because that's not fun. I'm curious though, I wanna start this conversation. Leave a comment below. What would you choose as a homeowner? Would you choose to have a higher yield, lower reserve, or would you choose to have a higher reserve, lower yield? I think this is the fascinating thing about home ownership and wells. It's all really kind of what is your preference and what do you like? Now, I get it. Like if you already have the house or if you really, really want the house, it doesn't really matter what you like. You're going to get that house anyway, right? So leave a comment below. Let's have that discussion and let's have some fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy content like this or videos like it, I have videos posted every day on the world of well and septic. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.